What's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Happy New Year to everybody. Hopefully everybody's staying safe and inside. We made it to 450 subscribers. I can't believe it. I never thought that this many people would want to hear me ramble on about car related stuff, but I guess it's happening. I'd like to thank all of you so much for the support. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and you're definitely going to learn some new things about your car. Today, I'm going to talk about intercoolers, mainly because I did do another video where I talk about three different styles of intercooler specifically for the mark 7 golf gti some people messaged me and they said hey eddie that was a great video but i want to know more about intercoolers how do they work what do they do how does an intercooler actually give you more power because yeah we know that it's good for your car and we know that you want to have like a bigger better intercooler but why exactly is it we're going to get down into the details of how an intercooler works why cars have intercoolers, why certain cars don't have intercoolers, and most importantly, why an intercooler even gives your car more power. What is an intercooler? Well, today you go learn! And then you can surprise all your friends with your uh, crazy intercooler knowledge. Essentially, an intercooler is a heat exchange device. You put something hot inside of it and it comes out cold. What an intercooler does in the example of a car, most intercoolers in cars are air to air intercoolers, which means that it uses air to cool down air. What happens when you have a turbocharged or supercharged vehicle, the air actually becomes compressed. Now, whenever you compress molecules of anything, you're putting the same amount of molecules into a tighter space. Therefore, there's less room for those molecules to move around. That creates heat. So when you compress anything, when you compress air, it's going to inevitably rise in temperature and become hotter. When air becomes hotter, it becomes less dense. We don't want that. We want the air to be as cold and as dense as possible for an engine in order to have the highest volumetric efficiency possible and in order to make the most power possible. So to answer the question, what is an intercooler? An intercooler is a device used for cooling compressed air. Intercoolers have an inlet and an outlet. Obviously the inlet is where the hot air goes in and the outlet is where it comes out Holder. The inlet and the outlet are connected by a series of tubes. You have, let's just say for example, 250 tubes, and these tubes are separated by fins. So the fins are attached to the tubes in order to give them more surface area so that they can dissipate heat better. So as the air travels from one end to the other of the tube, obviously the actual metal of the tube takes some of the heat, and then the fins further absorb the heat and allow it to dissipate. In essence, hot air goes into the inlet, passes through these tubes with the fins attached to them and comes out cool on the other side. Now that we have a better understanding of what exactly an intercooler is, we need to understand what does it do? I've already explained that it cools the air coming out of the turbo. As your turbo or your supercharger compresses air, it forces the air molecules to move into a tight space. That actually will create heat because the molecules don't have as much space to move around now. So they're bumping into each other much more. Hot air is less dense. Less density will actually give you lower volumetric efficiency. That means that you can't stuff as much air into the combustion chamber as you could if it were cold. By cooling the air down and making it denser, you're now able to achieve much higher volumetric efficiency and much more power from that charge. Hot air is bad for combustion because it can cause things such as pre-detonation and knock, and because like I mentioned before, it lowers the volumetric efficiency of the cylinders. The lower volumetric efficiency you have, obviously the lower torque and the lower amount of power that you're gonna be able to create. The intercooler takes that hot compressed air and cools it, thus increasing its volumetric efficiency and increasing its density. So now you have some thick, dense air that's gonna go into your intake manifold and then into these cylinders. Increased volumetric efficiency means more power and more torque, which is exactly what you want. Of course, car manufacturers wouldn't put intercoolers on cars if they didn't have any benefit. Now, of course, this is usually mounted at the front of your car so that air can pass through it and so that these fins now are able to be blown by the ambient air temperature. It can't cool it air colder than the air that's outside. So if it's 10 degrees outside, 
it can't possibly get the air going through it any colder than that because the air moving past it is 10 degrees. That's that's as cold as it's gonna get. So it's never gonna get to five to four or, or what have you, but it will get as close to ambient temperature as possible. Now, if you have a turbocharged car, you'll know that most of the time, if you watch your intake air temperature, it'll be way above ambient temperature. So that's bad for the car. Obviously, like I've explained, the hotter air is less dense and therefore it doesn't allow you to make as much power. Also, what happens is hotter air will cause knock, which will cause your car to pull timing. And when your car retards timing, then you actually have even less power. It's your best interest to get air as cold as possible to your engine. What kind of cars need an intercooler? Does your car have an intercooler? Do you need to put one on your car? Intercoolers are only for cars with forced induction. So only supercharged or turbocharged vehicles. If someone put an intercooler on a naturally aspirated car, uh, they're just playing some kind of sick joke on you because it, it offers no benefits. It's mainly because in a naturally aspirated car, the air isn't being compressed. So the air that the engine is sucking in is already at ambient temperature. So if it's 10 degrees outside, most chances are in your naturally aspirated car, if you drive around for 10 minutes and gun it, the intake air temperature is gonna be around 10 degrees, maybe 11, maybe 12, but it will be close because the air isn't being compressed, so it's not being heated up. If you have a turbo or supercharged car and the air is being compressed, that's when you will need an intercooler. Like I've mentioned, what the intercooler does is it increases the volumetric efficiency of the cylinders. I think it's very important to touch on volumetric efficiency and what exactly it is and what it means. Like I said, I could do a whole video about this, but put simply, let's say you have a space. So this space is going to be our combustion chamber. How much air can fit in that space? Let's say it's one liter of air. Now, if you're able to fill this with one liter of air, you've reached 100% volumetric efficiency. If you fill this space fully, you're at 100%. Naturally aspirated cars, depending on the engine configuration, so for example, some V6s can only reach about 75 to 80% volumetric efficiency. So let's say, like I said, there's one liter, you're only getting about 700 to 750 milliliters of oxygen in there, which then obviously has the combust mixed with the gasoline. So the more oxygen, oxygen you have, the better combustion you're going to get and the more power and the more powerful of an explosion you're going to be able to produce. So you want to get that volumetric efficiency as high as possible. To give another example, uh, uh, an engine that flows better, so a dual overhead cam inline four cylinder, those can only reach about 90% volumetric efficiency. And that's with like dual overhead cams, that's with variable valve timing, with all this crazy stuff, it still can barely get to 100. Yes, there are in some experimental cases in some laboratories with special valve timing, it has been possible to reach about 125 to 130% volumetric efficiency on a naturally aspirated engine, but that is not for road use. That's not something you're gonna see in regular everyday cars. I would say for the rule of thumb, the maximum a naturally aspirated engine can reach is really about 100% if it's really well built. And if, if it's running well, you get 100% volumetric efficiency. Now, if you think about cars such as diesels, if you've ever driven a diesel vehicle, you'll know that pretty much 90% of diesel vehicles have turbos, they're turbo diesels. If you've ever driven an SDI Volkswagen, a non-turbo diesel, it's it's dangerous it's a menace on the road it is so slow it is so lethargic and and you know it, it's just not a great driving experience and it doesn't have a lot of power and doesn't have a lot of oomph why because diesel has low volumetric efficiency but when you add that turbo and you cram all that air in there all of a sudden it becomes usable and you have all that torque and all that power that you need with a turbocharged vehicle you can reach 150 200 250 percent volumetric efficiency why why can you do that that's because let's say you can fit a liter of air into a certain space now yes that's at sea level right because when you use a naturally aspirated vehicle all you're getting is that 14.3 or 14.7 pounds which is from the atmosphere now when you're boosting it let's say you have 30 pounds of boost you go 30 pounds plus those 14.7 all of a sudden you're at 44 pounds of pressure that is forcing all that air inside so instead of that one liter you can now fit 
two liters, three liters, because the air is compressed. With all that compressed air inside your cylinder, you're now able to create a much bigger explosion and much more power from that one air and gasoline charge. So a turbo will improve and increase the volumetric efficiency, like I said, to maybe 150%. Let's just ballpark it and say 150%, okay? Now, if you add the intercooler and you make that air even colder and denser, it'll take that 150% and make it 160% or 165%. So you're getting 15% more volumetric efficiency just by adding the intercooler. So it is totally worth whatever weight it adds, which is negligible in order to have these huge gains of power. For a quick recap, an intercooler is basically a heat exchanger that takes the hot compressed air from the turbo and cools it down to make it denser and therefore increases volumetric efficiency in order for your engine to create as much power using that air as it possibly can. A bigger intercooler will be able to do this faster, more efficiently, and bring the air temperature to much lower temperatures than an OEM intercooler. It's also important to note that an intercooler was only found on cars with turbos or superchargers with forced induction. If you have a naturally aspirated car, you don't need an intercooler and you shouldn't have one. Hope you guys learned something about intercoolers. I don't think I skipped anything. If you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave me a comment. Hit that like button, subscribe. Hopefully you learned something today and I'll see you guys next time.